Today we are going to be looking at conductors and insulators, alright? <coughs> you already know what conductors is, I know. In your previous investigation, you saw that conductors allowed electricity to pass through them. The best conductors of electricity are metals. A few other solids such as carbon can conduct electricity as well. Alright? You must know that. That conductors allow electricity to pass through them. It's very, very important, you know. Water and some other substance are good conductors of electricity. This is why you should never use electrical appliance in the bath or while standing on a wet floor. This is very, very important because water conducts electricity. So if you take an electrical appliance to where you want to take your bath and then if by eventually it touches the water and your body is wet, you will be shocked. All right. So it's very, very important. You know that water is a very good conductor of electricity. Like they used to say, water and currents do not agree. All right. Because if you take it close to it, it will shock wherever it is there. All right. It is very, very important. You know that. So whenever you have water and there is current, always free yourself from it. That's why I always advise to before you touch electrical appliance to always clean your hand, make sure your hand is dry. All right. Any material that does not allow a current to flow through it is called an insulator. So why we look at conductor as material that allow current to flow through them. Or the other hand, insulator will not allow electric current to flow through them. Okay. So we can say conductors are bad insulators why insulators are bad conductor why because conductors we allow all the current to pass through or the other and the insulator will not allow current to pass through it can you guess which material can act as insulators can you plastic and rubbers Plastic and rubber are good examples of insulator. Insulators are used to make sure that electrical current does not flow to a place where it is not wanted or where it could cause injury or damage. Most electrical appliances will contain both conductors and insulators. Why? Because electric, we don't see it. We don't see electric current, yes. But we can study its flows, how it moves. It moves through conductors. Most of our electrical appliances are covered with insulators so that when we handle it, we are not electrocuted or shocked by the electric current flowing through them. Yes, your pressing iron, your rechargeable lamp, even your TV, name them, your electric cooker and all that they are all made of insulators you see plastic 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 all over their body even some electrical electrician uh, tools like plier you see it has a rubber handle that helps the user not to be shocked when working with a eh, current as you will see in the next slide can you see there? All these are examples of electrical appliances. Look at them. Your toaster, your pressing iron, your electric jog, your electric lamp. Name them. Your radio. They are all here. Look at them. They are all made of conductors and insulator. The reason for insulator is to prevent electric shock from reaching the user. All right. That is the main reason why electric con materials are covered with uh, insulators why do electricians working on electric cables wear thick rubber hand gloves and safety shoes with thick rubber soles? why why are they doing this when you put on this material we say you are putting on personal protective equipment also called ppe all right the reason being that these electricians working on electrical cables are aware that these cables are highly 
charge they carry current and this current is not the one we used to play with a, a battery if it touches you you dry off immediately so there is need to put on thick rubber and gloves which act as an insulator to prevent them from electric shock there is tendency that as they are walking their hand might mystically touch the naked wire and so because they are putting on hand gloves even if it touches by mistake the insulator which of course is the rubber hand glove will not allow current to flow through it to touch the skin all right the same thing with the boot is putting on the boot will prevent him from any electric shock let's assume current touches the pole all right and then the wood or the ladder or whatever is standing is wet but because of the boot that is rubber which is a very good insulator which does not allow current to flow through it this man will not be electrocuted all right he will not be shocked by the high voltage you are seeing there so it is very important that when you get close to any electrical appliance you must put on your personal protective air equipment why would you get out of the water if you are swimming and there is a thunderstorm simple water is a very good conductor of electricity thunderstorm contains a very high voltage I will put a very short story for you. The man that discovered electric current was killed by electric current. Why? Because he wanted to work with uh, this electric current known as thunder storm. Thunder storm carry very high voltage, all right? It attracts any conductor. That is why most buildings you see have a rod. We call it a uh, thunder rod all right what it does is that instead of the thunder to destroy a building it will hit that con uh, conducting rod and then it will flow through that conducting rod underground of the building now a building that does not have that kind of protection when thunder sun hits on it it tears the building what is tearing that building apart it is the high voltage the high voltage very high voltage so once you are swimming and then there is heavy rainfall or thunderstorm you need to get out of the water because once that thunderstorm hits that water it passes the the high voltage that is electric current into the water and then whoever is on the water at that very point in time will be electrocuted so it's very very important you should always get out of the water when it is heavy rainfall and then uh, accompanied with thunder storm the electricity we use in our homes flows through thick metal cables held up by poles or pylons this current is strong enough to kill a person so the power lines must be made safe special insulators made from glass or ceramics are placed between the power lines and the poles to prevent the metal poles from conducting the current now when you are walking in the street you discover if you look very well you will see some poles and then you see something like a plate looking like a ceramic plate on those wires all right you will see it shortly what those materials have to do is to prevent current from touching the pole you know the pole is connected to the ground right and all not all poles are wooden not all poles are block some are what metal so it's very important that these poles are protected otherwise if rain should fall and then water the pole is wet and it's not protected anybody that touches that pole will be electrocuted all right will be shocked by the electric current so it is very important that these wires are highly what protected so this is exactly what um, I was describing for you earlier. You can see the ceramics being used to protect the wire from connecting directly to this pole so that it doesn't pass current down and then leading to electric uh, chalk. All right. It is very, very important that you apply these materials in electrical wires. 
So I'm going to show you a video. We are going to watch this video shortly. Take note of the insulating materials and the conducting materials and our Metals are good conductors of electricity. In this module, you will learn that the metals are good conductors of electricity. You might have noticed that electricians use an electric tester that has a plastic insulation at the touching or holding end. Why is it so? Well, you will be able to answer this question after doing this activity. For this activity, we need iron rod, coal, copper wire, a piece of plastic, insulated electric wires and a bulb. Make an electric circuit with the help of electric wires, battery and the bulb. Connect the iron rod between the open ends of the wires. What do you see? You can see that the bulb glows. It means that iron rod is a good conductor of electricity. Now connect the coal piece between the open ends of wires. You will observe that the bulb does not glow this time. It shows that coal is a bad conductor of electricity. On repeating the same activity with copper wire, you will see that the bulb glows. On the other hand, when the piece of plastic is connected between the open ends of wire, the bulb does not glow. On the basis of these observations, these materials can be grouped as good conductors and bad conductors of electricity. You can see from the table that metals like iron rod and copper wire are good conductors of electricity and coal and plastic are bad conductors of electricity. So a tester is insulated by plastic to protect the holder from electric shock as it is a bad conductor of electricity. In this module, you have learned that metals are good conductor of electricity. That is, they allow electric current to pass through them. Well, I hope you now have a proper understanding of insulators and conductors are they are very useful i will see you in the next class do your assignment and stay safe bye for now